Entropy and the fine-tuning of the universe Does the initial low-entropy state of the universe favor a universe finely tuned for life to exist? As we will see in a few minutes, theoretical cosmologist Dr. Sean Carroll doesn't think so. But first, an entropy primer. The first and second laws of thermodynamics or rules for how matter and energy behave in the known universe. Albert Einstein showed that matter and energy are really just two sides of the same coin with his equation E equals mc squared. The first law of thermodynamics says that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. But this does not mean that matter and energy have existed forever because of the second law of thermodynamics or the law of entropy which says that quote in every interchange of energy in the cosmos there is a tendency for a certain amount of that energy to pass into non-reversible heat energy which is no longer available for productive work in the universe the amount of matter and energy remains the same it simply undergoes changes of state Given this constant change, matter and energy could not have existed forever. Think of gas in your car. The gas supplies usable energy for your car. A full tank of gas is equivalent to a low state of entropy. As you burn the gas, it is changed into carbon monoxide, something your car cannot use. Think of the carbon monoxide as energy in a high state of entropy. Usable gas in your tank is a state of low entropy and carbon monoxide coming out of your tailpipe is a state of high entropy. You can't use the carbon monoxide to power your car. Now think of the universe. It is an unassailable fact of the universe that entropy is increasing from a very low state to a high state. That is, the universe started out with a full tank of gas and as time goes by, the universe is literally running out of usable gas. Over time, usable matter and energy are being continuously transformed into unusable energy, just like the gas in your tank as you drive. The mystery for scientists who do not believe in God is from where did this incredible amount of usable energy come? Why did the universe, in other words, start off with a full tank of gas rather than have much more useless energy floating about? Again, if usable matter and energy are constantly being transformed into increasingly useless forms, then matter and energy cannot have existed forever. They had to have had a beginning. Early in the 20th century, physicist Sir James Jeans noted of entropy, quote, The more orthodox scientific view is that the entropy of the universe must forever increase to its final maximum value. It has not yet reached this. We should not be thinking about it if it had. It is still increasing rapidly and so must have had a beginning. There must have been what we may ascribe as a creation at a time not infinitely remote, end quote. Gordon J. Van Wylen in 1959 said this, quote, A final point to be made is that the second law of thermodynamics and the principle of increased entropy have great philosophical implications. The question that arises is how did the universe get into the state of reduced entropy in the first place, since all natural processes known to us tend to increase entropy? The author has found that the second law tends to increase his conviction that there is a creator who has the answer for the future destiny of man and the universe." End quote. We will see here in just a second a clip from theoretical cosmologist Dr. Sean Carroll. He will be talking about entropy and the fine-tuning of the universe. Carroll concedes that the low entropy state of the early universe is a problem he thinks can be solved without reference to God. But in this clip, Carroll suggests that the low entropy of the early universe was way more than what was necessary in order for life to exist. 
He thus argues that the excessive low entropy state of the early universe is an argument against the fine tuning of the universe. But there's a singular problem with his reasoning. We'll see if you can notice it. As Roger Penrose has pointed out, while multiverse or anthropic reasoning might address the fine tuning of the constants, it can resolve the apparent low entropy at the beginning of the universe. I'm of the belief that the fact that our early universe had low entropy is a huge problem for modern cosmology. Problem in the sense of a puzzle we need to solve. Not that it's unsolvable, it's extremely solvable. I have suggested solutions for it with uh, my colleague Jennifer Chen. We proposed a multiverse model which would explain why our early universe had low entropy. But the anthropic principle does not by itself solve it. With that, I agree with Roger Penrose, because the early universe's low entropy is much, much lower than it needs to be to allow for the existence of life. So I would take that as a strike against those who want to explain fine tuning using God, because here's an example of a fine tuning that was not just for us to exist, right? It was clearly some dynamical mechanism that has nothing to do with the existence of life, yet we have some fine tuning to be explained. It could very well be that other fine tunings have similar dynamical explanations. Did you notice what he subtly smuggled into the fine tuning argument? You have to be somewhat familiar with the fine tuning argument to have caught it. He said, not just for us to exist. Carroll is basically saying that the fine-tuning argument claims that the low entropy state of the universe was solely for the existence of carbon-based life. That is explicitly not what the fine-tuning argument says in any form. No proponent of fine-tuning is arguing that the low entropy state of the universe exists exclusively for allowing carbon-based life to exist in the universe. This is a commonly appealed to straw man of the fine-tuning argument. Opponents of fine-tuning wrongly argue that fine-tuning and the universe itself were set up exclusively and primarily for the existence of life. This is not true. This is not what the fine-tuning argument claims. Fine-tuning simply asks the question of why the universe is life-permitting at all, full stop. Think of the world's tallest skyscraper in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, the Burj Khalifa. It wasn't built primarily for occupancy, but rather for the glory and prestige of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Human occupancy of the building is but a part of that glory. If mere occupancy was the primary goal of the Burj Khalifa, a much less expensive and less ostentatious structure could certainly have been constructed. So to summarize, Carroll acknowledges the uncanny full tank of gas our universe had at its beginning. But Carroll misconstrues the fine-tuning argument by suggesting the fine-tuning of the universe was primarily for life to exist. The universe's initial low entropy state, coupled with matter and energy's ever-increasing high entropy, clearly point to matter and energy not being eternal or having existed forever. The universe's initial low entropy state coupled with matter and energy's ever increasing high entropy also clearly point to something, or in this case someone, outside of our universe giving our universe its usable matter and energy. Thermodynamics declare the glory of God. An initial state of low entropy in our universe is far more likely given God's existence than it is given naturalism. That is, nature is all that exists, and God does not exist. That God is the God of the Bible, given the evidence for the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The ever-increasing ever entropy of our universe could also be paralleled with Paul's proclamation that the whole of creation is groaning unto the present day. We long to be delivered from the decay of the world and our physical dying bodies. Romans 8.22 Thermodynamics reveals aspects and attributes of God that are truly remarkable. To design a universe that will always have all the energy it needs for its lifetime vividly displays God's omniscience and omnipotence. 
The entropic decay of our universe is surely something that is calling us back to Him. For relief in this age and deliverance in the age to come. And that deliverance is rooted in the comforting thought that the Lord Jesus Christ will come back and restore the creation to its original function, to the praise and glory of God. Revelation 22.20 20.